Let's talk about a guy I want to talk about. Sleeper, Alec Pierce from Cincinnati. He's like a 6'3", super fast, good route runner. Um, I think he's a fine talent, a solid talent. He goes to the Colts, and like, there's no reason why he can't be the number one receiver on the Colts this year. A lot of people like Michael Pittman Jr., and that's fine. Like He's definitely not a step down in talent from Michael Pittman Jr. And after him is Paris Campbell and quite literally nobody. There, There's nobody to catch passes from Matt Ryan. They have an upgraded quarterback. Um, I would assume the Colts sign a veteran. I don't believe it's going to be T.Y. Hilton. That, From what I've heard, we'll call it a vibe that I'm feeling. Uh, I think he might go to Baltimore. Um, and, you know, the obvious connection here would say be Julio Jones goes to Indy. If Julio Jones goes to Indy, I think that's awesome for Alex Pierce because Alex Pierce is going to learn from him. Julio Jones is one of the smartest, most clever wide receivers in NFL history, and he's not going to play 17 games. And when he does share the field with Alex Pierce, he's Alex Pierce is for sure going to see single coverage because it's still Julio fucking Jones regardless of what he did last year. Uh, but Alec Pierce is a guy the Colts love, super fast, clear outside guy, but Frank Reich likes him enough and likes his route running enough that he says that he thinks he can play him in the slot. That doesn't mean we need to treat him as a slot receiver, but that just means he's an every down guy. There's no way he is going to be schemed out of anything. And Fantasy Pros currently has him ranked 20, whoops, wrong rankings. Has him ranked 20th, behind McBride, behind Pickett, above Wandale Robinson and Jalen Tolbert. And if you say that Alec, Alec Pierce leads the rookie receivers in receiving yards, that wouldn't surprise me. Looking at offensive rookie of the year odds, he is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's 20th in the odds for offensive rookie of the year. And that's behind Trey McBride. That's behind Malik Willis, Matt Corral. That's behind Jahan Dotson, James Cook, Desmond Ritter. Like this dude's getting so disrespected and he clearly has a massive role immediately. And all he's done in, is produce in college. So please, people, don't tell your friends, but draft him for yourself. Like I did. Thoughts on Alec Pierce? I'm mad because you got him. That, that that's all I have to say. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you I'm have like, Matt Ryan on your team, you're not. I don't think you're going to run the ball as much as you did with did last year with, with Jonathan Taylor. Um, I mean, you're going to want to use Matt Ryan a little bit, and like you said, Zach, that, that I mean, that should be gold to anyone's ears who actually did draft Alec Pierce. Is if Julio Jones lands there, other than just learning from him, that's an instant double team every single play. And if he's playing slot, that means he can line up all over the offense. I mean, it, all signs point to yes for, for this guy from, you know, listening to you guys and, and, and reading whatever. And Jonathan Taylor's running the ball, so there's going to be defenders in the box to stop him. You're playing in the AFC South, so you get to play the secondaries of the Titans, Jaguars, and Texans. Like, there's so much to love about this. It's the perfect situation. And I get it. It's a white guy who went to Cincinnati who's now in Indianapolis. It's not very interesting, but I think it's, there's going to be results there. Um, the other guy in Indy who I also drafted, who I like a lot, is Jelani Woods, who is a fucking monster. He is 6'7". He ran a one of the fastest 40 times. I don't know. He's a monster, super athletic freak, 6'7". Uh, can run a bunch of routes. He lined up in the slot a little bit in college. They didn't really use him that much. Um, he's a Ken block. He's a willing blocker. He needs to improve a little bit as it, but he is just an all around athletic freak. Who's kind of that prototypical new age tight end. And the, the Colts love to use tight ends. They love to use two tight ends. And right now, uh, Jack Doyle retired. Mo Ali Cox is the starting tight end. I think he is for sure the starting tight end, but I think Jelani Woods has a chance to overtake him. And even if he doesn't, there were weeks last year where Mo Ali Cox was valuable for fantasy, and Jack Doyle is valuable for fantasy, and he's going to have that situation. He's going to have those snaps. He has a ton of upside, and I think he could be. There were people talking about him possibly being the best tight end in this draft. There were people who were projecting the Packers to take him in the second round, which is incredibly stupid. 
But like that's how high people were on this guy. And now all of a sudden it's like he's on the Colts. Let's not even think about him. He's ranked 32nd amongst dynasty rookies. That is below Dubs, below Taquan Thornton, uh, just above Calvin Austin and Greg Dulcich, who is the other tight end who I do like later. But yeah, he is the perfect stash him because I think he's going to be good in two years. He's like a taxi squad guy. For sure. For sure. Six, seven. That's stupid. That's and can run. That's Mercedes Lewis with knees. That's Jimmy Graham with knees. It's insane. Uh, Randy, does Matt Ryan have a big year? I don't think his stats are going to be crazy, but I think he's going to have a really good year. Yeah, I, I do think the Colts win that division. Um, yeah. So, and I do think Matt Ryan has a big part in that. I think their defense is good and improved from last year, and they have Jonathan Taylor. So, like, Matt Ryan's going to have weeks where he doesn't throw a ton, preferably from the Colts. You know what I mean? But I think he's going to be good. And just speaking of that division real quick, remember last year we were talking about, you know, I mean, we forecasted a Derrick Henry injury, um, how he got the ball like 40 times a game. I mean, what do they do now that A.J. Brown's not there anymore? I mean, Derrick Henry's getting the ball 60 times a game. He's going to have to. It's It doesn't make sense. Their offensive line's not getting any better. Mm-mm. Man, yeah, I don't know. Who's their backup? Oh, they got Austin Hooper, who now at tight end, who's a good blocker. So that definitely means Henry's going to get 40. <laughs> they drafted Hassan Haskins, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, Derrick Henry's not even good until he gets 20 carries anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonathan Taylor must be the first pick in fantasy this year. Yeah, I would say so. Don't you guys? Sure. Big Dick like, Eckler has a special place in my heart, so I will always take him first. I, I think that's fair. I think on a per game basis, maybe Christian McCaffrey and Eckler could be better. But you know, well, McCaffrey's injury problems, Eckler's injury problems. Right. Why even? Why even try? Realistically, yes, Jonathan Taylor's the first pick, but I mean, if I end up the first pick, I'm taking Devontae Adams. Is that just me? I mean, he's gone to the dark side. I'm, I'm out on Devontae Adams. He's dead. Yeah, never. He wins Most there. Overrated receiver in the league, right? Come on, guys. He, I mean, what's he do besides run routes? You got to catch <laughs> the ball, too. Let's look back Slam on his stats boy. how many drops he's got in his career. Yeah, go deep for once. Bum. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. carry a team to a Super Bowl. What a loser. You know how many targets it took for him to get those many catches? It's insane. 